Subramaniam, and uh, we are here to talk about uh, how we actually killed our sleepless nights from PD build, moving to Maven, and then to Maven Telecom. So this is actually an experience that we went through about a year and a half ago, and uh, we thought we would just do a quick talk on it. Right, so our topic is sleepless, sleep peacefully with Maven Tyco builds your product. So I'm from a company called Ansit Consulting and Subhu is from a company called as Everteam. Right, so Ansit is an Eclipse Foundation member and we typically do Eclipse Consulting services in India. And Everteam is a BPMM based company. So basically kickstarters of the BPM project in the Eclipse, Eclipse uh, projects. So yeah, so how many of you use uh, Maven Tyco on their projects already? Right. And how many of you have done PD build the Ant way? Okay. How many of you have done a mixed mode where you have PD builds that run on Maven with POM first approach? <laughs> okay. So good. Right. Like 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 I always say in all my talks, you know. The advantage of less people raising their hands is whatever we talk is right. <laughs> if too many people raise hands, then we have to be more careful. <laughs> right, so, yep, so, wh what, so yeah, so, PDE build, so what was wrong with PDE build? It was ant based, right? I, I, I've spent long hours trying to set up the build machines with the right dependencies in the right path, right? And then somebody would check in a code with a new dependency which the build machine doesn't have, and I would be actually sleeping, and the code gets checked in from Germany, and then the build fails, and we have emails shooting all sides saying the build failed because the dependencies are missing, right? So finally I said, I, I, I was so frustrated that I decided not to do automation of the build. At one point, I said, I will click the export button every time myself. <laughs> right, so yeah, so we all know what is the pain in PDE build. You know, we, we really don't want to spend too much time on, so yeah, that's kind of a Dilbert which says, my build system is connected to a massage chair. The number of time build fails, I have to be up without sleep, so it vibrates me. Right, so yeah, so just on a, then Ant improvised, right? So Ant moved ahead and went into Maven build where the dependency management was a lot more easier, right? It would find what it wanted as long as we pointed to the right repositories, right? So that was good about it. But the problem with Maven when Eclipse wanted to adopt it was that Maven worked very well for non-OSGI bundles, right? But couldn't work with OSGI bundles. Then we did our own part of the code where we do the Maven Eclipse stuff around it and then package full Maven to actually make a OSGI bundle instead of a non-OSGI bundle and all sort of things, right? Again, not required. But the idea was that Ant moved on to Maven, which made dependency management a lot more easier, right? And then came in the next phase where, yeah, so, Tyco came in to make life really easy, right? So with Maven, dependency management was taken care, but through POM.xml, right, which Eclipse did not understand. And as Eclipse developers, we add all our dependencies into the manifest file, right? So every time it was the responsibility that you add into manifest file, and you also add into the POM.xml file, and then check in everything, right? And this was a big headache because I always test on my local machine if it's working, and I just commit the code. I don't really worry about does the build system work. Right? So I, I always forget to write into the POM file. Then came in the Tyco build, which is really awesome. It worked like the PDE build on the manifest file, but giving me the goodies of not having to add it to the POM file, and the dependency management was automated because it could take from my P2 repository. So I really didn't have to set up my build machine with the right Eclipse downloaded with the right set of plugins. I just pointed to the various repositories that I'm interested in and the build would happen, right? So that's where the Tyco build came in. So our idea of this 45 minutes talk is give you a quick beginner level 
introductory demo of what you could do with Maven Tyco. How do you build the different artifacts? Right, so, yeah. Yeah, so normally with Maven, we build jars, wars, EAR, right? But with the Eclipse world, we build plugins, features, repositories, uh, P2 sites, or products, right? So the artifact change happens, and that's what Tyco brings in, right? So the, the idea of this talk is to show you how to build these artifacts using Maven Tyco, and how do you actually manage some extra stuff that uh, you are interested in, right? So step one, right, so which we are not going to demonstrate is you first need the Maven plugins downloaded for Eclipse, right, installing the M2E plugin, right, then on top of it, you need to install the, now with the latest version, M2E plugins come by default in Eclipse, so you really don't have to do the installation, right. Then on top of it, you need to install the Tyco configurator, which is responsible for the various artifacts and all of this understanding of these artifacts. So, and uh, right, so the idea now is how do I use this Maven Tyco to build these artifacts? How do I build my plugin? How do I build my feature? How do I build my site? And how do I build my product? So it's demo time, right? And, and um, demos are always like an examination, right? Sometimes they work on stage, sometimes they don't work on stage. So we're always cross-fingered, saying let's hope that it works, right? So yeah, so he's, so Subu will walk us through the demo. I would do, I'm more like a, he's the real man behind the Maven script. I'm more like his orator. I just talk. Right. Right, so uh, probably some sound effects, huh? Yeah, so like any other Eclipse plugin developer, we start developing some plugins. So we're just going to build a few plugins and then Mavenize it for you. So he's just taking some template projects that he has. So we're building a simple Eclipse plugin. Now having had the Eclipse plugin, the two important files for us are the manifest file and the builder properties file, right, which decide what goes into the jar and what are our dependencies, right? So we're going to mavenize this now. So there's actually a menu here under the screen, which is called as configure and configure it to a Maven project. Convert to Maven project, so it's going to Mavenize it. So if you look at this, the first change that really happens is, okay, we haven't spoken about Maven, so uh, leaving out that part of the story. So this is an M2E plugin which opens up and the packaging styles are what Maven supports. So it has jar, var, and EAR. But we're not building a jar here. We are trying to build an Eclipse plugin here. So we need to change that. So he first changes the group ID. Then the version number should always be in sync with your manifest file. So it's 1.0.0. For us, it's dot .qualifier in the Eclipse plugin. In manifest file, it's hyphen snapshot. So it's 1.0.0 hyphen snapshot. Right. And then the name of the plugin that you're building and the packaging style is manually typed as Eclipse hyphen plugin. Right, so we're gonna show you. Yeah, so he does not understand what is Eclipse hyphen plugin. Right, because, because Maven is not meant for that. So he will now include the required dependencies. 
from Maven that understands Eclipse Python plugin. So we are adding a Tyco plugin. So this plugin is from Maven and not from Eclipse. So it's a Maven extension that supports We can increase the font size of these, yeah. or zoom on that. Yeah, you can increase the font size on the Tyco editor. You can also zoom in here. Okay, that's just good. And then you can just run your add the socket key. So the first step is to make Eclipse plugin understandable by Maven. So this is the addition. Then you need to add your repository from where he would find his dependencies. So he's added the repository here, pointing it to a P2 layout and the URL from where he would find his dependencies. Right, so you can point it to any P2 repository online so that the downloads happen. And having done that, you just run your maven install command and it works. So yeah, step one is make your plugin. Step two is mavenize the plugin, which would actually create the POM file. When you create the POM file, the packaging style should be Eclipse hyphen plugin, right? And then once you have your first POM, you need to add in the Tyco plugin, Tyco maven plugin to it and then add the repository. trying to connect your repositories, trying to see if there's an update that he has to take. And the build is successful. Right, so we've just built an Eclipse plugin. So if you go back to the Explorer and refresh your package Explorer, you would find a target folder which contains the jar your plugin right so that's you did not really have to manage any dependencies even if I had right I would just make a plugin mavenize it set the type to Eclipse hyphen plugin go ahead and add the required repositories and the extension plugins to it in my POM file and then run so that's a simple plugin uh, deployment okay, so how to bundle a plugin so now we're going to bundle the second plugin and show you how to actually bundle multiple plugins at the same time using the parent form, right? Because you typically don't have one plugin to build, you have multiple plugins to build. So you like your JUnit test case, you run your test suite, it runs all the test cases. So here you run your parent form and it runs all the modules which are attached to the parent form. So we've got the second plugin up, you still need to mavenize it. So the same stuff appears, you have to Configure it, convert it to a Maven project. It's the same stuff again. You have to replace its group ID, the version number, and type Eclipse hyphen plugin here. So having done that, you have this error, right? So you could again add the plugin here and the repo here, but doesn't make sense to keep duplicating the information. So we create a parent project, which has all the common configurations in the parent form, and the child forms just use it from there because it's declarative. So he's creating a general project which acts as the parent project. He mavenizes the parent project also. But this time, right, the group IDs have to be same because that's how they get associated. 
but this time he's going to build the packaging type as form. You can, yeah. Right. So you just take the parent form. So whenever you have to create a parent form, the packaging type has to be set to POM, which is a default type from Maven. Right, nothing to do with Eclipse or Tyco. And then he creates the POM file for that. And then having created the POM file, he would copy the general configurations from the previous POM that we already had, the build plugins and the repository. So whichever is common across all your POMs, you can move them to the parent POM. Right. And then now, you need to tell the parent that you have two children. Right. So he has to add modules to this. So he goes to the overview in the module section, adds two parents, and then you need to select this update POM Right, so the parent knows the child, the child knows the parent. It's bi-directional. Right. So having done that, so now my parent knows the child, and you just have to do an update to get rid of the errors. Right, the errors are gone. Right, the two childs are being built. Now you can run your parent form, and then it would just build the two plugins for you. So you make a parent form, you may you just make a general project, mavenize it with the packaging type as form, and then add the two modules or the two children that you want to build along with the parent form, move the common configuration into the parent form, and then run the build. And it's successful. Right, so my parent project in turn invokes the two builds for the plugin one and plugin two and they are built. And now you would have your target folders in the corresponding project where the two plugins are built. Right. The two jars are present. Right. So typically we don't only build plugins, right? So the next step is to build a feature right, which consolidates the two plugins and then gives you an update site, a P2 site that you could upload it into your P2 site. So the next step is creating a feature. So it's you just a normal process of creating a feature project. Right. You can close it. So he's just creating his feature project. Having done the feature project, it has to also be Mavenized. So you undergo the same step, convert to Maven project. The same rules, the group ID, the artifact, the version number, but this time the packaging type would be Eclipse-feature. So when you build plugins, you build Eclipse-plugins. When you build features, you build Eclipse-feature. So again, Eclipse hyphen feature is not understood, but this time you just have to go add it to your parent because the parent has the required common configuration. You go to your parent, include that bidirectionally, and update your feature project once. And the error is gone. And now if you run your parent form, it also builds your feature along with it. Right, so it builds your plugin in respective plugins inside the target folder. It builds the feature inside the feature, inside the target folder of the feature. The first warning that you see, which says build is platform dependent, because I'm only building currently for my platform. I haven't included the other platforms. It's like when you export your product and it asks you, do you want to you include the Delta pack and then you say export for multi-platform. So, yep, so that's my parent form, my feature, and my two plugins built with the target folder there showing you the feature. Right. So the next step for delivering this to someone would be your repository. 
because that's the final deliverable that you typically give. Right? So you can build a repository or a product. Right? Both use nearly the same uh, mavenizing techniques. So he's just creating an update site. So update site has to be just a general project. It, because there's nothing called as an update site anymore, right? So we just make a general project and mavenize the general project. And yeah, so he's adding all the required things for the update site that we normally do. So he's got a category.xml where he includes which features to download. So that's your typical. Uh, then he mavenizes this, again with the group ID. But this time he's going to use the packaging type as eclipse-repository, right? So there's eclipse-plugin, there's eclipse-feature, then there's eclipse-repository, right? So repository is for your final deliverables. It is meant for your update sites and your products. And again, you need to come and add that to your parent. So if you see here, we tick the parent and we say update the child also, right? And then finish, update. So the error on the POM file is gone. Now to remove the marker symbol, you just update the project once. No more errors. You can run your parent form, and it would give you your update site. Successful to give you an update site, right? And if you look at your update site with the target, it basically has your repository there with the features, plugins, artifacts, and the content.jar, which can be copied onto or just shipped as an update site. And you can install this now using your Windows uh, help install new software in Eclipse. Right. So the the next one is to build an RCP product out of this plugin, right? Which also follows the similar technique, but with a product configuration file and the P2 director, uh, sorry, um, the director plugin, which is responsible for generating the application. This was always there in the PDE build. It is just that it's got an Maven feature, right? So it's just added on here. So he's just taking a template project. The only difference that we see from our regular development and here is that for all your bundling projects, like feature or for the product, you have to create a separate general project and keep your configuration files inside that. Normally what we do as a normal developer is I keep my product file also within the same application. right? I don't keep it separated out. But in this case, you have to keep it in a general project outside. The same happens with the feature. The feature contains your category.xml, but you, so it's, it's separate, uh, and uh, sorry, your update site has to be a general project separated out containing the category.xml. So my, so if you saw here, the application plugin is still an Eclipse hyphen plugin, right? Because that also has to be shipped like a plugin. Final exe that I generate is of type Eclipse hyphen repository. So your normal application plugin also is an Eclipse hyphen plugin. He is adding it to the parent form, updating the child. The same steps again and again, so it becomes quite easy. So now I'm creating the general project, which will have your product.configuration file, which would basically help you create your executing. So 
already created the dot product file and you can kind of make that file. Right, the, uh, the only extra step that happens here, which I would want to show you, but after the mavenizing is done. So it's Eclipse hyphen repository again. So for anything that you bundle, it could be a feature or a product, the packaging style is still Eclipse hyphen repository. Okay, so that doesn't change. I'm going to add that to the parent form to get rid of that error. Five, we have to now add the so in the pump file we can add the multi target support, the multi platform support and the director plugin for it. So we've got code templates, so we just use the code template. He's added the multi-target support here for all the operating systems. And then he goes to the product form file. So this is the only difference between the update site and the actual uh, product, including the director. And so we give him the steps of converting that into an EXE. So he's basically saying, use the P2 director, product, make a product out of it, and then zip it up. So three steps over here. And then including the target platform in the POM. So two extra steps from feature to product include the multi-target stuff if you're interested. So whichever targets you want to generate for, you include only those targets. Right. If you're not interested in any other target, you don't have to do that step. And then go to your, the POM which has the product configuration, right? And then add your P2 director plugin to it and then tell him how to materialize the product and archive the product. He's running all of that build. First time you run Maven Tyco, it's slow because it has to duplicate the complete repository on the local machine into your M2 folders, into your P2 repositories. But once it is done and you're not changing the version, it's quite fast. It's doing OS by OS. Now archiving the bundle. And that's the successful build. So now if you go into the product folder and then refresh the target, you would see the product. All the zip files, all the exes generated for Linux, for Windows, for all the platforms that we had included. So there's no issue of setting up the Delta pack and exporting it and all that stuff. He takes care of downloading what he wants. Right? Yeah, the first time he's heavy because he downloads the whole world, but I still find it more comfortable than me downloading that world because I make mistakes. Right? So, so that's typically uh, a complete life cycle of a small project. So we develop plugins, we develop features, we sometimes make update sites, sometimes make the, put that into an RCP, make a product out of it, right? We do not have too much experience on the E4 side of it, right? I've, I've never done that on the E4 project, but yeah, it really definitely works for uh, an E3 project and it's quite successful. And we actually managed to convert uh, a 7R build that we used to run on PD with Maven mixed mode 
to probably a two hour build and uh, the chances of the build to fail is way more or less where the seven hour build if it breaks we spend at least two to three days trying to figure out what happened because the scripts were written in 2005 and then we're just managing those scripts can we really convince our client saying you have to migrate we took the effort we migrated it and we really had fun doing that we learned a lot of stuff which we haven't uh, showcased here handling non OSGI jars what happens to them because Tyco is not very friendly with non OSGI jars so basically what I mean is any jar that you include in your libs your Exodus jars or SQL connectors or whatever yeah so so there we have a successful build right so I've taken that from from these blogs right, so the next part is yeah so what we've done is as part of this experience that, that we were going through, we used to always go to the Maven Tyco ref card and copy the blocks, right? If I want for the repository or if I want for the uh, director part or if I want for adding the plugins, right? So what we did was we actually went ahead and contributed a Maven Tyco utility project, which took us like about 20 minutes to create just a template. You do control space, you get all your templates. You just change the version numbers, and you don't have to buy hard it or copy it or from anywhere else. Right? So that's available on Marketplace as Maven Tyco Utilities. Right? And, and most of the code snippet that you require for building your Eclipse products or plugins are available on control space. Right? And we invite more people to add as many as templates to that, right? which you think is useful for uh, Maven Tyco build, right? And, and, and the next thing is handling non-OSGI jars, right? So we actually, when we were doing the migration, we had lots of Java jars in our project. And we were reaching out to everybody that we knew was using Maven Tyco. You know, we walked into every other company that was into Maven Tyco. And we were trying to figure out, how do you do this? I mean, what do you do for the jar? If I have a MySQL connector, how do I tell my Tyco plugin or the Maven Tyco plugin to download it, right? And then the only answer that we started getting was just commit the jar. That's the easiest way. Don't worry about it because Tyco doesn't support a mixed mode M2P2 repo, nor does it support a POM based dependency handling. So then they said just commit the jar. We actually went ahead, we did that first time. And then we were still continuously working on how to figure it out. And then we found some workarounds documented by multiple people. We took the best of all of that and tried to create our own Maven script, which could do it for us. And now we have a script, which we will soon put it into the Maven Tyco plugin. So when you do a control space, you get that script where you just change your IDs of the plugins that you, uh, jars that you want to download, and it takes care of it. So what we do is we tweak a little bit. Not, I mean, we haven't done any magic here. We just do what Maven typically would do. We download the plugin using some Maven extensions onto the machine, and then we do a copy of that into a fixed folder, which is already there in my project, which is already added to the build path. So I create a lib folder in my project, and just add the lib to my runtime tab in the manifest file, and it's empty. But during the build, we copy the jars into it. And then we make them available at runtime. So, and, and it, it works. So uh, we really don't know how we made it work. <laughs> we kept trying many things. It started working. We froze it at that point, and it said it works. And we have a script that runs, right? So that's typically how we handle non-OSGI jars. Yeah, the first approach is check in the jar itself. But if the jar versions upgrade, then your, S your source control system is going to get heavier because you're going to check in a lot of jars, right? So the other way around was download and copy them into a specific folder where the folder is already added into your build path in the manifest file right so and yeah the last part so when we were walking through all the demo what were we doing we were mavenizing every artifact that you created could be a plugin could be a feature could be a repository uh, could be a product we kept mavenizing it and then we had to every time go add it to the parent form then yeah, the, the, the Maven Tyco guys came up with the solution of formless build, right? So they, they started questioning the system saying, anyways, the manifest file is present in all the projects. 
it knows all the dependencies. If you claim that he can resolve all the dependencies, then why do you need a POM file in every project that you create? You just need a parent POM, which knows which all plugins to build or which all features to build, which all repositories to build. You just run the parent POM and it internally takes care of reading through the manifest files, resolving the dependencies and making a build, right? Because uh, the advantage of doing this is if you have a huge project and you want to mavenize it, right? You have to go to every plugin and create a POM file, which is a lot of steps, right? And then add it to the parent POM, right? But with this, you can actually mavenize your existing projects in a lot more easier manner just by creating a general project which becomes your root project and then just adding a POM file there and adding all of these. Uh, you don't even add, need to add, right? Uh, the, the, the .maven extension file with the list and then it just runs. We don't have a demo at the moment configured, but yeah, so it, it's easy and, and it's very well documented online to at least try it out. So the next things for you to actually go back and look at is how to handle non-OSGI jars and then how to actually use a POMless build for mavenizing your existing projects so that the effort is less. Right. And how much time are we doing good? Okay. You have? Okay, he's got a huh? POMless, right? Yeah, we have time, yeah. So he has a working set for POMless build, so he can actually show you that. Right, so, so what he's done is he's got a plugin, which is org answer eclipse demo dot plugin one, and then he's got a general project for creating the parent form, and then, okay, in this, yeah, the only step is that the child project should be present inside the parent. Unlike in the other case where you just have to reference them, here the parent project has to contain all your child projects. So he only works on those. And then you have to add them in here. And then you just run the POM file. So yeah, the, the, the major step is to migrate your flat workspace projects into a parent project. So you will have to basically change your locations probably when you create your project. And then the parent project does not, the child project does not have a POM inside it. See, that's the real plugin there. Doesn't have a POM. We have all of this documented on our site. Right? All of that we've shown here are available as tutorials. You can have a look at them. The code is also available. So yeah, so this is what we finally understood. <laughs> Just a, a last slide to add to this. We did all the hard work, migrated everything, and then finally someone says, Maven Tycho is outdated. Let's move to Cradle now. <laughs> right, so and, and the managers are always fascinated with terms. They always want to keep migrating to the latest. Right, so yeah, we haven't worked with Cradle too much yet. So yeah, so the next thing for you to look at from the build angle is Cradle. So we just put a slide on that, so that when you go back, you know the next stuff that's really picking up in the Eclipse world, yeah? So we've got some important links here. So all this is available on our GitHub account. The code is there. You can just take the code and this code really works there. All the tutorials are there on our site as whatever screens we've shown here. Right, then, then yeah, the ref card from the Tyco wiki. And then, yeah, our, our uh, Maven Tyco utility is available on the Eclipse marketplace. We've, we've got about, yeah, we've got about close to anywhere between 7,500 to 10,000 downloads for that plugin so far, right? So, and then we've got some more GitHub projects that run. You can actually look at our GitHub account. We've got small, small utility plugins that we build on for our day-to-day -day work. So we've got a pull request plugin for GitHub 
that you can raise a pull request from your Eclipse itself. You don't have to actually go to github.com and raise the pull request. We've got a pull request plugin. Then we've got some Java utilities and things like that. Yeah. And we always invite people to fork it and use it and stuff like that. And you can also contribute to it. Good. So thank you. You have questions. You can ask us questions. We don't have a slide for questions because we are scared of questions. <laughs> right? So you can ask us whatever you want. Uh, We just go with the connector. We don't manually install it at the end. No, each uh, like like what you saw was each each plugin had its own POM, right? And the parent POM had reference to each of them. It had for plugins and for features. So it's more like a test suite that runs all the test cases. So it just goes to all the so building the feature doesn't mean it'll build the uh, plugins also. Hmm? Right? Ah, we don't have to mention it in the, because that has nothing to do here, right? Feature and plugin is more of an Eclipse thing for installing. But for the build, they're just independent jars. I can build the feature separately and build that separately. So it really doesn't require anything in the bomb file. Only the parent needs to know what all you want to build. No worries. All of it. Because for, for, for uh, the basic rule is for Maven, actually for him, feature and plugin are all jars. He doesn't differentiate between them. And he doesn't try to understand all that. He just picks that and tries to do a build. So he just knows he has to build plugin one, plugin two, feature. Right? For feature to build, you need the plugins to be built already. So you already have to build with the order that you also went with. Uh, you mean uh, convert, extract them into a plugin and then include them into a feature? Right, without extracting them is what we did with the non OSGI jar bundling, actually. So we have scripts which just, you know, we keep the jars in one location, we copy it into the uh, plugins. Uh, no, we don't put them into a repo or anything. We download them through an M2 stuff onto a local machine, right? And then we move them into the lib folders of whatever project you're interested in. But these lib folders are empty. Right. OK, you have OSGI jars. And uh, we can treat them as the same, right? Right. He wants OSGI Heffin Jars. Uh, OSGI Heffin Jars. Are different from plugins. They go into features. They can do that, or they can use the command line argument for creating a repository. Right. Right. 
but you don't want to do that. He doesn't want to do that. Yeah, so he just wants to actually create a P2 repo, right? We actually didn't have that use case, but when we were reading through, we actually realized that there are command line utilities which can generate a P2 repo for you with all the P2 artifacts that you have. So probably that could be one of the ways. You'll have to at least do that part to actually generate a repository out of it and include that repository here. But the second question that I always have, does the latest Tyco include uh, local repositories? Okay, we, uh, something that we don't have an answer also is that I don't know if Tyco now supports local repositories, right? So it always has to point to a server-based repository. It doesn't really ha have support for target platforms or local repositories. Uh, they have support for target platform only. Yeah, yeah now it supports target platform, correct. Right. Yeah. So that's a successful build from his company. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like you know a repo, um, like what we do in GitHub, right? You create the repository and you keep all your plugins inside it, right? So the same thing you'll have to do here. Okay, the same plugin is. Right. right. Okay. Basically, it should be in the folder where the parent form is, right? So. No, no, he wants to know, should you copy that into the parent also? Do you have duplicates is what your question is. Okay. Hmm? Okay, we download from it. Okay. Okay, we've not tried that on uh, formless, but what we do is we build them independently and then put them onto a P2 site. And then we download it into a third build system which takes it from there and then does the build. So we run two different builds for two different, because we have like multiple projects which share the plugins. So we run their independent builds, put them onto a P2 site, which is a local site for us within our organization and we download that onto a third build actually. Good, so, yeah. How to integrate with Jenkins? Okay. Love Jenkins. <laughs> we actually have a tutorial on how to run Jenkins, but here we actually didn't plan that demo, so we actually didn't start the Jenkins way. But, uh, yeah. If that's so, yeah, if we are not running off time, then uh, you know, I can take this offline and also show you this step actually on how it has to be done with Jenkins. Yeah, a 13 step tutorial which actually tells you how to install and actually configure your parent form in that and then gen run the Jenkins build. We also have tutorials on that, what we've not shown on testing uh, your plugin, on including a JRE version. Right, sometimes when you make a product, you want to include the JRE into it. Right, if it's Windows, some other JRE. If it's Linux, some other JRE. So we've got tutorials on how to include that. Then we've got tutorials on how to include a drop-ins folder. Right, sometimes you want a drop-ins folder to be part of your product. Right, so how do you do that? It'll always be the same. use of Maven build project. 
And yeah, before that, you need to configure your mail. And then mention your root form. Okay, no. Yeah, where is the project? Where is the root? Yeah, but yeah, we, we can actually show you this code. So we can see. Yep. All right. So you you can you can you can. Actually, we've not demonstrated it here, but we have a tutorial which also talks about how to run your unit test cases on it. You can do a multiple stuff on that. So thank you very much.